my teammates. Um, uh, since we are in uh, an age of information explosion, so it is very important for us to use the data efficiently and effectively. So here our research is based on, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let me just first introduce you to what kind of data we have. First, um, let me tell you about the scale and duration. The scale is just mentioned about, about four floors, and the duration is on an hourly basis. And the data, our data can be basically classified into three categories, the pantry base, the uh, floor base, and the room base. For the pantry base, things, um, people generally don't care a lot about the use of electricity of the pantry. So it is very sensitive to events, and um, we can see a very irrational uh, trend in the data. And for the, room, uh, for the floor base, it is the aggregate amount of the use of electricity of the old rooms. So it is uh, basically more stable. And uh, for the room base, uh, since uh, every room has a particular uh, uh, habit of using the electricity, so it is too specific. So let's just think about the water. Like we w we won't care a lot about the each the motion of each particular molecule in the water, but we just take the water as a whole to do some research. So here our research will generally based on the pantry based and floor based data. And. Um, and then I want to talk about what we want to get behind the data. First, we want to know the power consumption pattern of the student dormitory and to let them know how much electricity they will use on a monthly basis. And also, we want to, de um, we want to deliver some uh, effective and wise energy saving uh, suggestions and also um, promote the communication and interaction between the students, among the students. And also, uh, here, our uh, data just suggests about three ways to uh, promote the uh, energy saving uh, by monitoring, poster, and smart grid who will be covered in the uh, following presentation. Uh, here is about a raw, uh, raw data we get. Um, and the, the <coughs> part of the chart is the uh, electricity use. Uh, it is about the air conditioner electricity use in the pantry. And the lower part is about the AC use of all rooms. Uh, from the chart, we can see that uh, for pantry, it is very sensitive to events and it can indicate very irrational behavior. Even during the reading week, uh, there is just a very slight decrease. But for the rooms, we can see a significant decrease uh, among, along the timeline. And uh, for during the reading week, the use is declining a lot. Um, and then here is the daily cycle. Um, the blue line is about the air conditioner use of electricity, uh, and the green line is about the uh, line and sockets. Uh, here we can get to basically we can get to conclusion. First is that student may shut down the air conditioner uh, in the morning, uh, and they go to school and then restart it after they went back. And we can see that the fluctuation of the lights and sockets is generally uh, less than the air conditioner. And the, here is. The, Talk about the uh, weekly cycle. Uh, the upper part is about the weekly uh, is about the 11th floor and the lower part about the 24th floor. Here we can see that especially during on Saturday and Sunday there is less pattern and the data is generally randomly distributed. Yeah. So. Thank you. And uh, we just see a lot of circles in that graph. And uh, I summarize further about the data. Take the average about each Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Sunday. And uh, this curve is the average for the uh, AC usage. And this curve, black curve, is for the uh, LS line and socket usage. And this is the average for this is 24 floor. What we can observe is that uh, during the weekend, which is Saturday and Sunday, the average value would be higher than uh, the average for Sunday and Saturday is higher than the uh, average. So the daily cycle is quite robust. Well, we can see the variation is small. And uh, there are some certain difference between weekdays and weekend. We can for weekend, we have slightly higher AC units than during the afternoon afternoon time. But for a um, LS usage, it is quite robust. In economic, we can use inelastic to mention this demand. 
and then talk about the correlation between AC usage and the light and socket usage. After we plot it out, this is a 24 hour basis. So you can see a cycle. What do we mean by cycle? It is just this one. This is a 24 hour cycle. And then we focus on the cycle change during different times, September to October. And we find there's a dramatic decrease in the AC units after, uh, after September 27th. In other words, the three line, the four lines here is all below, uh, they are all below the average. And another three lines during the September is higher than the average. And with this cycle pattern, if we have some modeling, physical modeling or mathematical modeling, will this, um, as we mentioned, that AC unit is quite inelastic. If we can use it as a good indicator, then we can project or predict the AC unit, use light and socket usage to predict the AC unit, then, then we can give very good suggestions to our students for adapting peak usage with modern technology. Also, similar pattern can be observed in 24th floor. And roughly, there's a cycle during, for example, the yellow line, the pink line, and the blue line. Surely, we need some more investigations. Yeah, then I will hand over the stage to show you. Okay. So today, um, I will talk more about the pattern of uh, energy consumption. Uh, as we can see from this graph, actually, like um, starts from 27th of September, there actually is a, a sudden decline in energy uh, consumption in both floors. And we, when we look at the reason for such de second decline, is actually um, the announced of the launching of the Blue Sky programs. And so we. Um, so we uh, we think that because of this kind of program, people knowing that they are being monitored, um, their uh, energy consumption are being monitored. So people will tend to reduce their energy consumption and, uh, because of that. So we propose to monitor all the floors. And the reason why we uh, propose to monitor all the floors instead of individual rooms is just like what I have mentioned by my teammates before. Actually, um, for individual floor, those um, uh, energy consumption pattern was just too specific. So, while for the um, the whole floor use, the energy consumption will be relatively stable, which means that those um, patterns can make it more uh, easier for them uh, for us to monitor and also to um, to modify. Okay, together with our monitoring system, we also propose a ranking system, which means that basically all the raw data um, collected on each floor's energy consumption will be um, like can be collected, and after all, all the um, data will all the floors will be ranked according to their monthly energy consumption, and this is like an example of what this kind of ranking should be look like. Like um, each month, um, those floors can be ranked according to their monthly energy consumption, and then also they um, will be compared. The energy consumption will be compared to previous month, and also uh, they can know their percentage change compared to previous month. So by doing this kind of ranking, uh, the people can be uh, more aware of their energy consumption. And I think uh, also we propose that in the end of the uh, year, the top three floor with the least um, energy consumption can be awarded. And, and then we think that um, together with this kind of ranking system and also the monitoring system can help to, uh, uh, raise people's awareness of their energy consumption and also encourage them to reduce energy consumption. Okay, thank you, Julie. And after all this, we we'll finally turn to uh, we have up, uh, after that we we'll turn to the what we can find in the daily and weekly cycle. We have just seen the cycle pattern, the daily cycle pattern. We found a peak of usage in the midnight. And how can we cut down this kind of peak usage? Uh, first of all, we may just open one of the lights in the room. We have two switches in the room and in a double room. So we you only use one is enough to light all the room. And besides that, use common area if possible because uh, as for the 
mean that usage, most of them are the AC usage uh, in, in the hot days. And if we use the uh, common area together, we are sharing the same AC and lights, we may uh, co uh, reduce the energy consumption. And besides that, maintain a good lifestyle if, if possible. That means if we go to sleep a little bit earlier and get up a little bit earlier, we must be, uh, have more hours in the daytime, which uh, we don't have to open all the lights. And besides that, remember to close all the alliances when leaving. And when you feel cold, please turn down the AC. Uh, because too cold the weather, uh, the, the temperature may not be good for health and will consume a lot of energy. And besides that, by comparing these two floors, uh, we can find that the 24th floor, which is a girls' floor, uses more energy than the girls' floor, 11th floor. Uh, what can we find from this? Uh, first of all, perhaps it's not like what you thought before that boys tend to use more energy than uh, girls, and so everyone should be aware, be aware of their energy consumption. Everyone should take action to reduce their energy usage. And besides that, uh, as eleventh floor has more PhD students who maintain a uh, more uh, regular lifestyle, so that means a regular lifestyle can actually reduce the power usage. So after that, let's handle this to Luna. <laughs> Well, uh, as Jordan said, that a healthy lifestyle may have save energy, and therefore uh, we can use stick to. Uh, oh yes, this one. Uh, and therefore we can use sticks to let registers notice uh, how to live a healthy lifestyle. For example, uh, we can attach a stick beside the uh, light switch and tell them only open one inside of the home to light. And also, beside the air conditioner operator, we can advise them to open low fan and even promote them to go to the pantry to cool themselves. It will also or, or save both energy and money. And you can see that uh, it is only uh, open one door, open one latch, and in pantry uh, there is a stick right now, and I think it is very useful because only by seeing this uh, can people notice that they are saving energy. Well, um, the stickers are fixed. Is there any more fle flexible ways to uh, to? Is there any more flexible ways based on the based on the? Uh, sorry. Uh, is there any more flexible ways based on the monitoring? Uh, based on the uh, is there uh, the usage? Uh, the usage. Okay. Uh, so we can give feedback to individuals and design uh, their personalized advices. For example, uh, by searching all the, by adding all the data together, we can form a, a physical model, and this physical model is predictable. And we can see that the, in the previous slide, it is uh, it is circulatory, and therefore we can use this physical model to predict their behavior in the near future, and therefore design a personalized instruction to them uh, by sending emails, and also. The ranking can be added in the emails, telling them uh, how, which, or uh, what is the number of this block ranking this month, and it may be increase people's incentive in using less energy and get a higher rank, and also it will protect privacy. Thank you. And after talking much about how to change the behavior of our residents, we would also like to propose a more efficient energy usage through a more stable energy usage. And from the graph, we can see that uh, the weekly energy consumption of the 11th floor and also the 24th floor. And the energy uh, usage is really unstable and chaotic. And sometimes the energy usage is far below the average value, and sometimes it is far higher than the average value. When the energy usage is really high, and it will hugely decrease the efficiency of our energy usage. 
So we propose that uh, we can store the energy when the energy requirement is low and use this stored energy when the energy requirement is high so that we can uh, flatten the uh, peak value and also increase the efficiency of our energy usage. And this kind of energy usage pattern is actually has a name and it's called the smart grid. And our smart grid is that uh, we connect all the uh, units of our hall together and monitor, monitor that data so that we can uh, balance the energy usage and uh, enhance increase the energy efficiency. And I will hand the following time to my partner to explain for this. So what is smart grid? Um, in a simpler words, it is an energy management device. So it, it's divided into three parts. The first, the first part is the sensor. Uh, it monitors the energy uh, consumption and then it transmits the data to the controller, which is basically a calculator, to calculate the distribution and then it further transmit the data to the actuator. The actuator, in other words, it's, uh, it will save energy when the energy consumption uh, is in a low period and then they will release energy uh, when it was at a, a peak period in order to uh, smoothen out the peak value as mentioned as Kelvin and so we can uh, avoid instability of energy consumption to avoid energy use. And on top of that we propose to uh, promote renewable energy sources like wind power and solar panels and this two already implemented uh, at Centennial Campus of HK data from different floors and we have given meanings and findings from the data pads and we have given uh, long term and short term possible solutions. This is the end of the presentation, thank you.